Good morning. This is the second Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. We will be celebrating the Lord's Supper today. We invite you to join us for the singing of uh, songs of thankfulness and praise uh, in our bulletin, uh, Lutheran Service Book 394. of thankfulness and praise Jesus Lord to thee we raise manifested by the star to the sages from afar branch of royal David stem in thy birth at Bethlehem Anthems be to thee addressed, God in man made manifest. Manifest at Jordan stream, prophet, priest, and king supreme, and at Cain a wedding guest, in thy Godhead manifest, manifest in power divine, changing water into wine, anthems be to thee addressed, God in man made manifest. Manifest in making whole Palsied limbs and fainting soul Manifest in valiant fight Quelling all the devil's might Manifest in gracious will Ever bringing good from ill Anthems be to thee addressed, God in man made manifest. Sun and moon shall darken be, stars shall fall, the heavens shall flee. Christ will then like lightning shine, all will see his glorious sign. All will then the trumpet hear. All will see the judge appear. Thou by all will be confessed. God in man made manifest. Grant us grace to see thee, Lord, present in thy holy word. Grace to imitate thee now, and be pure as pure art thou, that we might become like thee at thy great epiphany. Praise the ever blessed God in man made manifest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, 
and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer, the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above dreams his handiwork. Day to day, Pours forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their measuring line goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, 
that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou art, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, Mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord is Isaiah chapter 49, beginning at verse 1. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle for the second Sunday after the Epiphany is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, 
even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah which means Christ, he brought him to Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I invite you to be seated as we sing our hymn of the day as printed in our bulletin, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, LSB 702.
Grace be unto you, mercy and peace, from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text is our gospel. The next day, Jesus, or rather John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. This is our text. How many of you use your helpful index finger to point things out? I used to like to do that, but my mom used to tell me, don't point! And uh, it's rude to point. And, And, you know, maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. But what are you supposed to do? Uh, you, I, I, so may, uh, you could use your fist like this, or maybe you could use your hand like this, or maybe you could... Isn't it better just to use your handy index finger and point to something? But you know what they say. They say if you're pointing with the finger one direction, there's three more fingers pointing back at you. Oh, yes, there are alternative ways of pointing. And um, specifically, one of the... Uh, very interesting things that even persons at our seminary and throughout the church, uh, I think uh, maybe every pastor during Epiphany points out this uh, about this big picture uh, that was painted over an altar in Europe somewhere. And it just has John the Baptist with a finger that is two times bigger than a finger should be or whatever. It seems to be pointing up like this, but it's pointing at Jesus. And what's interesting is that we see in this particular text that John says that that is the whole purpose of his ministry is to show the people Jesus. I gotta stop doing that. That's what Epiphany is all about. Epiphany is the season where we point to Jesus. Uh, and, And of course, that's something that's important because they want to picture what was going on in the text that we have before us. They did, they, you couldn't, they did, probably didn't have um, the technology to have uh, maybe uh, John speaking to the people uh, in, in maybe a recorded voice or something. But So they had him pointing to Jesus. Now, the Bible doesn't say he pointed to Jesus. It just says he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Two of the disciples that were with him, and one may have been John, probably was, because John in his gospel is very, uh, very hesitant to mention himself. We know the other one was Andrew. They get the hint, and they follow Jesus. And uh, John, of course, uh, uh, is of course he thought he had the right to point to someone. There is, of course, something else that does the pointing. And that, of course, is God's law. 
kind of pointed out by John saying that uh, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And there you have encapsulized the whole teaching, the whole purpose of your faith as Christians to deal with the problem of sin. The finger points at us, doesn't it? You are a sinner. Forty years ago, when I graduated from seminary, I remember that uh, the legendary Reverend Dr. Guido Merkins from Texas preached a sermon. And what was rather interesting, he preached the sermon at that time, and then a couple days later he preached it for the Missouri District Convention and probably preached it about a hundred times. But he spoke about a, um, a prophet, a modern-day vagabond, a beggarly looking prophet that would go into a subway or any public area and just simply at random point to one person there and say, guilty. Remember, Dr. Ger uh, Dr. Merkins was very fond of, of maybe kind of using a Billy Graham tone to his voice. Isn't that right, though? The law of God points to you and to me and says, guilty. So the finger pointing comes to us. It may not be very, it, it's an inconvenient truth that we are sinners before God and we are guilty of sin. God's law convicts us of that. We're troubled about that. And so in a sense, uh, it is a good thing that we're sort of shaken out of our smugness, our complacency, and brought to the understanding that we have sinned against God and that our sins have made a separation between us and our God. But as I said, that's what Christianity is all about. Christianity is not about getting rid of pain. That, of course, is what Buddhism is for. Uh, or uh, the, the understanding of what matter is or discrimination or climate change or ignorance or inflation. But sin. That's what Christianity is about dealing with. Because that, of course, is what God thinks that should be dealt with for us. It all depends. But, you know, the world commonly says, well, but it all depends on what you think sin is. No, it depends on what the Word of God says sin is. So people nowadays are not really worried about living a life of sin. They don't understand that sin is even worse than cancer or heart disease. It is something that not only kills us physically, but also kills us eternally. And Jesus spoke about hell an awful lot of times, and it's, there was a, that's kind of an inconvenient truth, in a sense. And so it's necessary, the message is repent and believe the gospel because the kingdom of God has come near. The kingdom of God comes with the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, John's whole ministry was most importantly to uh, prepare the people for the coming of the Messiah. Pastor Hageman, I, I remember a couple weeks ago, uh, in, on December 4th, in his sermon, he said that uh, repentance is like going the wrong direction down the highway. And, and sometimes it's very inconvenient for you to get off the highway and turn around and, and go in the opposite direction. Uh, when I, one time I was coming down to seminary and my dad bought me an old clunker car that, that was uh, always the uh, radiator was boiling over. And I remember going through the uh, the, the toll booths in uh, Illinois for the tollway there, and I must have gone through, I had to go back and forth because, because I, I didn't get in the right lane or something, and I went through that about 10 or 20 times, and I had to pay the toll 10 or 20 times as well. So that's what repentance is, turning and stopping going the wrong direction and going into the right direction. What can we do about our sin? Well, I, there's nothing we can do, obviously. That's why the Lamb of God comes in. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, as John says. 
And what is he talking about? Well, he's talking about the Passover. He's talking about the fact that what the, the event which made Israel the Old Testament nation as they were God's people was the event where God rescued his people and brought them out of the slavery in, in Egypt. Jesus, of course, is the true Paschal Lamb to which the uh, lambs and goats that they uh, prepared for the Passover meal were simply uh, uh, symbols or, or um, devices to point them forward to the need of the sacrifice of an innocent victim for the sins of the world. That's the heart of the gospel, that God in Jesus understands, loves, and cares for you and me so much that Jesus would make himself a sacrifice for our sins. So he is, as Luther says in his Easter hymn, the true paschal lamb. Here the true paschal lamb we see that God so freely gave us. He gave his life on the accursed tree, so great his love to save us. See, um, see uh, his blood now marks our door. Faith points to it, death passes o'er. And that, of course, was what happened in the final, the tenth plague in Egypt. They were to sacrifice the paschal lamb and then to touch the doorposts and lintels of their homes so that death would go over them and, of course, rain judgment upon the Egyptians, the firstborn of the Egyptians. But for us, his blood saves us from the curse of of the law, from eternal death and from death itself, which is the final enemy that you and I face. And that is so comforting. It's so comforting that each of us can say, my sins were paid for by Jesus' death on the cross. Even as Isaiah puts it in probably the most important verse in the, on the book of Isaiah, the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And so, we're comforted. We see the, the suffering Jesus, and we point to the cross. So it is polite to point. You know, Jesus doesn't mind if we point at him or hit at his cross, because we want to show where the task was completed and where God has reconciled himself to us in our Lord Jesus Christ. Each of us can confidently, by the grace of God, say, Jesus takes away my sin, for he took away the sins of the whole world. And so, by the grace of God, we can kind of take the hint like the two disciples and try to be with Jesus as much of the time as we possibly can. And that's what we're doing when we come to church. We're being with Jesus. Where are you staying, Lord? I'm right here. And that's, that's important for us to remember because you don't have to go back in a time machine to go back to Calvary. And as some preachers say, you know, you have to go back to Calvary's cross and receive the forgiveness. No, no, no. It's right here in the word of his grace, in the body and the blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And so that's so important for us also to remember that we shouldn't hold on to any of our sins. This is kind of an interesting thing. I, I, I remembered listening to the sainted Dr. Norman Nagel on KFUO one time. He, he was speaking about the possibility of a Christian wanting to hold on to some sins. You know, are we willing by the grace of God to confess all of them, to get rid of them? Some, there might be some that we might not want to get rid of. And, and Dr. Nagel said that, you know, if you don't want to get rid of those sins, then you're not for, going to be forgiven for those sins. It's important for us to remember that when we confess our sins, by the grace of God, we confess all of our sins. All of our sins we ever committed our entire life. And guess what we get for it? 
We get the full and free forgiveness of all our sins when the called minister of Christ declares to us in the stead and by the command of the Lord, I forgive you all your sins. That is the voice of God, forgiving you all of your sins and giving you the full blast, refreshing good news of the gospel. Follow Jesus. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. I invite you now to stand as we confess our most holy faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Created in me a clean heart spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me Thy free spirit. Amen. Our prayers are requested for our beloved president, Michael Pauloon, who will be undergoing surgery this Wednesday. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, worthy to be held in reverence by all people, everywhere we give you humble and sincere thanks for the innumerable blessings that you have bestowed on us without any merit or worthiness on our part. We praise you especially for preserving for us your saving word and the holy sacraments. Grant and preserve to your holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and provide faithful pastors to preach your word with power. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send laborers into your harvest and open the door of faith to those who do not know you. In mercy, bring to repentance the enemies of your church and grant them amendment of life. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger. Strengthen us and all fellow Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Christ and help us to fight the good fight of faith that in the end we may receive the salvation of our souls. 
Bestow your grace on all nations of the earth. Bless especially our country, its inhabitants, and all who are in authority. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound in all places. We commend to you the care of our schools so that our children may grow in useful knowledge and Christian virtue and thus bring forth wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamity by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine, and from every other evil. Protect and prosper all who labor in their rightful callings, and let all useful arts flourish among us. Be the God and Father of the lonely and the forsaken, the helper of the sick and needy, the comforter of the distressed and those who sorrow. And especially on this day in which we gather in, on the Lord's Day, we remember your servant, Michael Pauloon, who will be undergoing surgery this Wednesday. Grant your comfort and peace to him. Grant that the surgeons have the appropriate skill to be able to relieve him, that it might be a full and joyful recovery, and that he might uh, come, come from the hospital and home in joy. Might you also be with those on our parish prayer list, we pray for Angie, Michael, Darcy, Sarah, Celia, Sophia, Jane, H Harry, Anne, Robin, Don, Kathy, Marilyn, Tom, Sharon, Cindy, Missy, Don, Renee, Emily, Bernadette, George, Inez, Mel, Bonnie, Dee, Dan, uh, Billy, and our shut-ins, Stephan, uh, Doug, Ruth Ann, Carol, Janice, Helen, Evelyn, Vera, Ruth Ann, Judy, and Dee. Grant, O Lord, these are petitions for the sake of him who died and rose again from the dead, our gracious Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now uh, we have the communion or the service of the Holy Sacrament. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Brother Greg, take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May this strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Peace be with you. Your sins are forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen.
unto the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Blessed we the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, we may should do the announcements now. Please uh, make sure that you uh, uh, fill out your attendance uh, either online or in the back and the appropriate uh, forms. And, um, and also, uh, we invite you all to Bible study that comes right after uh, this, this service. Um, at this time, we will now sing our closing hymn, The People That in Darkness Sat, hymn 412. at a glorious light have seen. The light has shined on them who long in shades of death have been. In shades of death have been. <laughs> 